right. Welcome back, everybody, to the Trade Raiders Podcast, the comic book club where we read a different trade paperback every single week. I'm Daniel. You're Nathan. We're brothers. We read comics. Yes, we do. And we love our listeners. You. Yes. This Valentine's Day week. Yeah. Uh, I hope everyone has, has someone to love. If not, have a, has a comic to love. <laughs> like Love Everlasting. Correct. The book that we're reading this week. Yeah. But uh, first, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say something else, but I couldn't think of anything. <laughs> we, got, we got time codes in our description. We got back matter banners. We got the poll list, but we start with the news. Before you can love, you listen to the news. Yeah. Daniel, what the hell's been going on this week? Not a ton, but... Not much. Uh, Millie Alcock has been cast as Supergirl okay. in the DC Universe. Yep, I did see that. She is... Um, what has she done? She's in House of the Dragon. She is the young version of Rhaenyra Targaryen. Okay. When, once you finish Game of Thrones, you'll get to that, and then you'll appreciate that. <sighs> okay. Yeah, I'm only... I just finished season one, so I'm not there yet. <laughs> You're well on your way. So... By the time that movie comes out, you'll probably be just finishing. <laughs> yeah, probably. Hot D. <laughs> with, yeah. With, how, with how long it takes me. <laughs> exactly. Donny uh, Cates and Ryan Stegman at Phoenix Comic Con. That's pretty exciting. Oh, Ryan's coming too? Ryan and Stegman. Oh, nice. So that'd be neat. I don't you know. I You know, I have a copy of Vanish, number one. I do as well. So I could get that signed by them if I have I a want. Venom number one. I don't even. You have a Venom number one? Yeah. Oh, I have a Venom number nine, like the Watchmen cover. Oh yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's a good one to get signed. I have most of his like stuff. I think Silver Surfer. Oh, I don't have Thanos, his Thanos stuff. But that's like the only thing. Like, Do you collect his Thor? I, oh, he Hulk too. Yeah, I have a lot. Of, I, I, I have his shit, Hulk. I have his Thor. I have his Guardians. I didn't finish like some of those, but uh, mm. I have them. Daniel, Tidal Wave Comics. A publisher I only bring up when they're doing something weird. And they're doing something weird. What was the last weird thing they did? Uh, I think they always just do like weird biographical comics. Okay. And they're doing another one. And it is a Travis Kelsey uh, biographical comic book. The football player. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what position he plays? Uh, wide tight end. <laughs> wide tight end. A wider tight end. <laughs> Tight the, end, right? The widest of tight ends. <laughs> he is a pretty wide man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's correct. Good okay. Job. Yeah. What, what team is he on? Uh, Chiefs. Oh, okay. He's going to the bowl. Going the to the bowl. The big bowl. The big game. The big game. We can't say. We can't, yeah, the, legally. You, you yeah. can't say that. I had to do that at Microsoft That's when I worked there. nuts. When I was like, when I was telling people like, oh, look at them. They're using Surface Pros on the, for the big game. Like I couldn't say Super Bowl. It was I crazy. Don't under, I don't understand why. What, yeah. What are they going to do? I think someone explained it to me, but I'm like, That's still dumb. Yeah. It'll be released February 7th, so by the time you're listening to this, it's out. It chronicles Kelsey's college and NFL career, as well as his life on the field. I'm going to probably read this. Uh, Wait, is it like a graphic novel comes out? Or is it like a first issue? I think it's a first issue. Okay. And I don't know who's drawing it. I'm trying to see. I can't say that he'd probably be the most interesting player to get a comic, but that's still neat. Wait, there's a Taylor Swift comic book too. Oh God, that they made. I think they're only online. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if digital they print. only. Yeah, I think they might be digital only. Should we read the Taylor Swift comic <laughs> for the Super Bowl? Yeah, <laughs> that's not a bad idea. Whoa. Anyway, that that's cool. I guess. Yeah, it's not. But <laughs> what was the last was thing that they did? That dude, it was like dude, I don't know. I just know I've heard I've I've heard them as like a publisher, and I think it. I think it's just for weird autobiographical stuff. That's cool though, or biographical. Nathan. Mm -hmm. dreamworks is making a dog man movie dog man yeah you know the comics dog man no look up the comics dog man and then you'll be like oh yeah i do know the comics dog man oh the the like kids book yeah yeah okay comics are for everybody there is probably more aimed towards children yes there's a movie called dog man that uh it's not that one it's not that one okay (laughs) it's where like it's like a dog that's like a cop or something yep uh, those went crazy at the Scholastic Book Fair. Hell yeah! Yeah. Okay. Uh, coming to- a Dave Pilkey classic should be coming out January twenty twenty five. Wait, what is it again? <laughs> Dog Man, a-, a movie, movie. Okay, cool. DreamWorks, nice. Got it. Got it. Good. Sorry. 
threw me off. <laughs> are we going to read a dog man? <laughs> you bet your ass we are. <laughs> are we going to read dog man and cat kid? It's maybe. What this, about, is a, this is a crossover uh, team up book. <laughs> I think he's a, a you, dog man you know, original. The, those like books that were always like on the comicsology homepage, you know, for like super popular stuff. Yeah. You got to get to those, you know, like dog man, like diary sm- of a wimpy kid, smiley or whatever. Uh, Captain Underpants. I think that's yeah, technically a comic. Yeah, I'd read that. I used to fuck those up, dude. Dude, <laughs> yeah, those are so. I think it's Dave Pilkey who did those as well. I could be wrong uh, for sure. Could be wrong though. Can we read Dogman Twenty Thousand Fleas Under the Sea? It's nine dollars at Target. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a depressing bio yeah. <laughs> bio comic. Just a pirate book. Nice. All right, let's get in the book this week, Nathan. Yeah, let's do it. What do we read this week? We read Love Everlasting. By whom? A, a comic book by Tom King, Elsa Sherat Cher- 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 I'm going to look up the pronunciation. Cher- 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 How do you spell it? Uh, C-H-A-R-R-E-T-I-E-R. Matt, Matt Hollingsworth might throw him down for nominees and colors. Oh, yeah. He's great. He's always been great. Clayton Callis on Letters. Emma Price is the designer, which is a uh, important part for this book. Marlar Isaac yeah. edi- and editing. Oh, it's probably Isaac. It's a cool name. That's a cool way to spell Isaac. If that if it's Isaac. Oh God. Shawati. 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 It rates as a four out of five on the pronunciation difficulty uh, chart, which is difficult, but just under very difficult. So Elsa, Elsa Charity. <clears throat> yeah, this is like a Substack book. They were releasing it for free. Like you don't even have to pay for their Substack. You could just like go to Substack and look up Tom King or Elsa. I don't know who is like posting it. Is that how you read it? No, I read it on Kindle. Mm, so you bought it? I did. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Because I'd like to support the comic book industry, Daniel. Because yeah. you read it for free illegally. Uh, not illegal. It was through uh, <laughs> government public library systems yeah yeah so you're saying you support the government daniel <laughs> no <laughs> quite the opposite i shouldn't steal <laughs> yeah you should <laughs> no don't do that uh anyway and what, what yeah, you think? Th- this is our uh valentine's day book uh good on us for finding the valentine's day book that like stops right when they kiss you know <laughs> yeah where the, it's like you get yeah. right up to the point where the romantic stuff happens and then it like gets cut off and it's that's all like, about the chase nathan <laughs> yeah it, <laughs> i guess it is it's, ne- it's never uh you know the destinations the journey yeah that's why movies end with like a big kiss you know they, you don't care what happens after it's like yeah, okay yeah. yeah they did it but yeah it's it's i didn't know what to expect and i was very confused on the first issue mm-hmm. i was like is this like a bunch of shorts or like anthology or something and then what i did was not read it like a couple pages at a time i like made sure i had enough time to read like issue like a whole issue at yeah. a time and yeah i, I think too. that was the best way to go yeah sometimes i'll just like you know read a couple pages at work or whatever yeah but um i think looking into this i knew about the time travel aspect of it and because I, I'm like, this has to be more than just like a romance book, you know, but uh, yeah, I didn't know what to expect. I think that was like their whole point was that they don't really, s- you don't really see romance books anymore. And so they were like specifically yeah. trying to do that. And so I was like, yeah, it's probably just like a nice with a modern swing you yeah, know, to keep to keep it, keep it interesting, keep current uh, readers interested. But yeah, this like Joan characters in some sort of weird time loop and whenever she falls in love and does a big kiss or is about to. Get, get proposed to get or something or something yeah something happens and she's in like a completely different situation doing the same thing with a completely different person and i think it's pretty cool i think it's I, yeah i thought it was good i think elsa is such a great artist yeah and she's Banger. really good at like portraying different time periods which i'm sure would be really tough yeah sometimes it's like western sometimes it's just modern day sometimes it's like 80s 70s and you have to like kind of differentiate them yeah and uh and sometimes she's like the main characters in like France somewhere or like Paris and then like America. And so there's like a bunch of different settings that I'm sure were kind of hard to nail down, but uh, it was really cool. Definitely. This is the first trade. I think there's two total. I don't know if it's continuously coming out. It is continuously coming out because I think it's Dark Horse is publishing it issue by issue. And then they're also doing the trades. So they have to wait for the issues to come out. 
and then they can collect them after that. It's image. Is it image? Okay, yeah. that makes sense. I just Dark Horse seems like they get all of those. So I yeah, they just snag them up. Yeah, be like, your shit's done. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, are you Print. done? Are people done reading it online? Because Con- we'll do it. In control person. P that bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Send me the file. <laughs> and yeah, let's go. So yeah, Joan Peterson's the main character. She's caught in like a classic soap opera love triangle between her best friend Marla and Marla's boyfriend, George. Joan was hooked up with like a job working for George. So now she's working for her best friend's boyfriend, a little spicy. And she would fantasize about being with him, but has to watch George be with Marla. But one day... George kisses Joan during like a late night at work that they were doing and Joan like feels bad for like betraying a friend or whatever. But it turns out that Marla and George broke up. So Joan can now be with George. Still kind of fucked up though. Still a little fucked up because she didn't know. And but and then Marla's like, I don't know how I'd feel in that situation because it'd be like you betrayed me or at least you think you betrayed me. I don't know. It's weird, right? Yeah. It's like because ultimately it didn't matter because they did break up. But I don't Mm -hmm. know. And then, uh, so we both know how Tom King can be being, yeah. being a little dense, a lot mm-hmm. of captions, stuff like that. Lots of I captions. think he does better on this one personally. I agree. But you know, first issue, there's like whole panels that are just captions that are just words. And I'm like, oh my God, this is, this is such a Tom King book, you know? I, it is. But I feel like this works better because it, it feels like my brain is accomplishing more when I read just the panels with like the text on it. It is more rewarding. Yeah. It, it's only on this issue. Uh, and then like some of the other panels get to be a little bit more dense, but I, I don't like having like a lot of words on like a panel. Yeah. And I think I'm just dumb for that, but like, I think it, it's nice to space it out like this and this was a good strategy for them to do it. To compliment like Elsa's art for these different time periods, it seems like Tom also like captures the drama and the dialogue really yeah, well to time. fit that. And so it's, it's really neat. Yeah, I agree. Like it's very, very dramatic, you know? And then like some of the more modern stuff, there's like a little bit more action and shit involved. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of cool. It feels like you're watching like an old soap opera TV show or something. Yeah. And uh, I like this opening explosion page. I don't know why there's an explosion or whatever happening, but it's very dramatic. I think that's a cover. That's like one of the covers. Is it? Uh, uh, not, not like the what you're seeing i don't think that's a cover i think that is part of the book i think oh yeah i think you're right but i think it was also used as a cover yeah cheers to them for bringing back like <laughs> word balloons on covers yeah i mean you see it every now and then you do but but they did it on purpose yeah i like it uh but then there's like a hard cut to like a new issue and they even go as far as to like put like the title of like that chapter or whatever. And they put like Tom King, writer, Elsa, artist, Matt Hollingsworth, like all of that. And so I'm like, okay. 15 pages in. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, this is a new issue, I guess. But no, it's the same issue. But it really, you know, complements the point that like they're trying to make. But uh, yeah, it's a hard cut to like basically a new issue where Joan is in love with a local band singer named Kit. Uh, despite Joan's father's wishes because she doesn't want him being with like some some deadbeat. But Joan is confused because she's like, what about, wasn't I in love with George? Wh- who's George? And then uh, she's like convincing herself that she like loves Kit. And when Kit reveals to Joan's dad that he is the son of one of his business partners, her dad's like, oh, sweet. Yeah. <laughs> this, this is great then. <laughs> and then Kit and Joan can be together. But then there's another hard cut to like a different time period. And... uh so, yeah, at this point, I was really thrown for a loop. But what I do like is that they switched to such a drastic time period in this next one. Yeah. Because it's like all Western and stuff. So, Joan's like working for her father. She's like doing cooking and cleaning duties. She's dating Chad, which is not a very good Western name, I feel like. That's, yeah. That feels more modern. I don't know if there's any Chads in any Western movies I've ever seen, but it's no. funny. But Chad's about to pop the question to her. But she's now confused about George and Kit and who those people are. So Joan kind of goes a little bit crazy and she takes her horse and rides for multiple days until the horse dies. And then she keeps on going and she like passes out. But when she wakes up, a cowboy gives her the message that love is everlasting and she gets shot and she wakes up in another love story like in a hospital. Sick with love. Sick with love. <laughs> uh, some of the chapter titles are pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, no, that they, they, they tickle me. Mm-hmm. 
So yeah, every time she's fallen in love or like love seems to work out, some dude shows up and shoots her in the face and then she wakes up in a different situation entirely. Yeah. Uh, so pretty strong first issue, I would say. Like it makes you confused because it's like, what happened to George? But then Joan's like also... In like an intriguing way. Yeah, I would know? say. But like, you know what the questions are and I feel like that's the, the hardest thing to nail sometimes. Yeah, so these covers kind of like give you a taste of like what's to come and then when there's all these jumps through time it's like these little like checkpoints in a way yeah and so anything that any tool you can use to kind of split up a longer issue like a first issue that's 30 pages yeah i think this is just, that 30 pages yeah i think it's helpful oh yeah it is but i think it can kind of get a little bit tiring because you're like okay let me try and remember who kit is you know or like who the, who the new bitch this week is <laughs> yeah but yeah issue two uh, real quick. So, when the, the Western one, I think that's based in Arizona because uh, she she lives on Maricopa Ranch. I I did notice that. Yeah. I was like, wow. I'm like, that's like a street or something near us. <laughs> Dude, that's here, I think. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, see uh, episode two or it's chapter two. Chapter two. We see when Joan was born, which is in like a huge Abbey property. But Joan is actually the daughter of the maid there that works. And... Joan grows up with like the king's boy Roger and they fall in love one day when Roger takes Joan shooting but Roger is supposed to be in like an arranged marriage type situation soon and uh, I think what they do really good in this one is that in just like a few pages they have to establish that these two have been growing up together like throughout their lives into adulthood and then Matt Hollingsworth kind of uh, chooses different color palettes for the different time periods for when they're like basically like toddlers or kids to like tweens to, you know, modern day. So I feel like he does really good with uh, handling that as well. How do you feel about Elsa's kid drawings? I think she's great. Yeah. I think she has like a very particular style where like most, most of the time people's like eyes are closed or something, or at least Jones are Yeah, to like express like extreme happiness or extreme sadness or whatever. Um, But I think she does pretty good with kids. She yeah, got like, I mean, like, I don't think she necessarily draws older people like wrinkly or anything. So the these like shots where it's just their heads, it can mm-hmm. be kind of difficult to tell. Still yeah. looks great though. But I think she does good with the proportions and how the kids have like really stubby like arms and yeah, legs, <laughs> very round heads yes. and stuff. So you can definitely tell who's a kid and who's not. So Roger's father finds out about the their relationship and they have to keep it professional for a while between them. Roger eventually decides he only wants Joan and they continue having like shooting trips together. But really, it's just an excuse for them to go somewhere and be together. And then one day, Roger has Joan meet him at the cabin. So Joan does. But Joan admits that she never cared about him. And then Roger gets shot. And I like this reveal. (laughs) (laughs) Because it's like... It shows how many times Joan's been through this and she's trying to like cheat the system now. So she pretended like she was falling in love with this dude for like her whole life, I guess. Yeah. Just to like learn how to shoot so she can fight against the cowboy. Yeah. And she knew the cowboy was coming at some point. Right. And so I think I think that was cool. But it's like all these different like time periods that she's in. It's like she has this the whole life where she grows up and whatnot, mm -hmm. you know, but it's just always misplaced and whatnot. So she knew. In this one, like her fourth go around, that the cowboy was going to be coming. So, do you think that, like, when she gets killed, does she just like pop into the time when she's like professing her love or whatever, or does she like just restart her whole life and then at a certain point starts to vaguely remember what's been going on? I think it's like because I don't really get the rules of it. So, I think she pops into a new time period, like the same age and whatnot. But she's already lived a full life and yeah, she remembers but like that. Her, her memories are like, um, you know, just like a whole different life. So you think she popped in at like this moment when they're about to like, I don't know, propose or, or whatever? No, I mean like. Or do you think she's been playing him? Like maybe when like. She, she probably popped in about like when they're older and then like the dad wants to like send him away and stuff like that. You mm-hmm. know, when that's like when oh, the yeah. marriage is really like coming into play. Yeah, that's true. Poor Roger gets the fucking <laughs> shitty part of this whole situation. Yeah. I didn't, even, like, I didn't even know other people could see the cowboy, you know? Yeah. I thought, yeah, I wasn't sure. So I think that's what, what's cool about this is that they're giving us like little, little crumbs to like 
to grab onto and eat, to nibble on to nibble on and be like okay so that's how that works you know like the, the cowboy is real mm. he can shoot real people <laughs> he can get shot at you know so it's kind of cool yeah but joan was actually prepared for the cowboy uh character that keeps killing her so joan gets shot by the cowboy but manages to kill him before he can deliver his like love is everlasting message because that's something that he says every time uh and then joan and roger die there i think mm-hmm. i don't know but I do like this panel where the cowboy gets shot in the face and it looks like all these shotgun pellets are like ripping his face off. It's yeah, pretty cool. It's like a silhouette. In silhouette, yeah. Uh, so pretty good action sequences for like a like a romance book. So it's why cool. why do why does time reset for her? When she dies. Okay, but I feel like it also But she resets. has to be killed by the cowboy, I think. And so without like spoiling, like uh, I feel like in like the first issue you know, she doesn't get killed until like the en- the end of that issue. I think we just haven't, we weren't seeing that. Like, I think the cowboy comes in like next panel, you know, but like we don't. Like they, after they, they're in love? Yes. And get married and stuff? Yeah. Like I think in that first situation with George, when they're like kissing each other and at work or whatever, I think the cowboy just comes in like shortly after that, kills her, but she doesn't necessarily remember that part yet. Hmm. Okay. Because it seems like this is the only thing that triggers like a, a reset is uh the cowboy coming in okay. but then she like dies here not necessarily from the cowboy so maybe it is whenever she dies well it is from, from the cowboy because she has bullet wounds in her mm, this from, is a good point from the cowboy gun <laughs> good good point good point it's not like she died of natural causes next I mean, to roger yeah i mean bleeding out's pretty natural <laughs> uh but what but yeah. gets you to bleed Nathan? uh bullets bullets only bullets all right issue three uh, this is a wild issue, <laughs> but there's yeah, like, a, I lo- this is like my favorite one. <laughs> this, there's a girl named Joan. She's graduating high school and she's has to make the tough decision. She's Joan in all of them, right? She's Joan in all of them. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, she has to make the tough decision to stay in state to go to college with her, with her boyfriend who's named Fred or not risk ending up like her parents who are like constantly fighting and bickering all the time. And she thinks that if she's with Fred in state, she'll end up like them because her parents were high school sweethearts and now they hate each other. So she's, but she's also afraid of ending up like her shitty librarian who's always been alone her whole life. And I'm like, why is the librarian catching strays? Because <laughs> <laughs> I guess everybody hates her, but. I feel like a librarian would be kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. I think if you like books, yeah. Yeah. Totally. It didn't seem bad. And I like how Elsa like dresses people here. Like the librarian has like those pointy glasses that, you know, I feel like is very stereotypical. Of like <laughs> if the you're 70s or whatever. Like a librarian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, very high school looking uh, outfits for like the 80s or whenever this is set. So. Uh, so when Joan asks her librarian about love and stuff, she finds out that her librarian's name is Joan. Uh, Joan Peterson. And she used to have a thing with young Joan's dad, Bill, before she called it off after high school to travel the world. And then Bill's relationship faltered because he like lost his true love. And so he ended up dating some other bitch that I guess he was with in high school. And then eventually named his daughter after his lost love, which is Joan. Which is wild. Which is like, why would you do that, Bill? After your ex, bro? <laughs> yeah, after that your would ex. never fly. Yeah, ex- absolutely not. No wonder they fucking fight all the time. <laughs> like, it's Bill's fault. Yeah. And now you've fucked up your kid, your kid's love life. And so, young Joan decides to stay in state with Fred so he wouldn't be the one that got away. And I was like, so I was like, I think they look similar. Yeah. <laughs> but I thought it was like a time travel thing. Where she's talking to like herself? Yeah. I thought like old librarian Joan Peterson was talking to, like young Joan Peterson. And I'm like, I don't know how this works. There's, yeah. There's, there must be a new rule to this, you know, universe that they've created. But no, just a weird, you know, situation. But so Fred's like, sweet. I'm happy that Joan's staying. Uh, let me go get your books in the library or whatever. But when he goes into the library, he puts on the bandana to reveal that he's the cowboy. What? (laughs) (laughs) Which makes no sense. His face is his secret identity. Yeah, I know. (laughs) And he's been looking for Joan to kill her. Joan Peterson is a librarian. And and then 
he delivers the love everlasting message and then like kills her supposedly but i was like <laughs> how long has he been fred like how long has he been a kid in school and has he known that this was had, this has been joan and like how old is the cowboy how does he reset as well that seems like because it seems like i don't know he's an adult so i'm like I'm, this really fucks me up because i don't really yeah, know so i'm like why is he killing joan now you know yeah because like she she's not in love with anybody yeah and she's not running away from love uh, she did like 20 years ago i think th- he does he does mention that he's been trying to find her for a while so i think he's just really late but then uh, if, if he's been trying to find her for a while he's pretty fucking old and so you can't pass as like a high school student i would i would think yeah and so like it's weird because the rules of this whole situation are kind of getting revealed slowly but then i'm also very confused by this issue but i think it was a banger issue <laughs> <laughs> It was just funny when he like walks into the library, he like puts on a bandana that he like had in his pocket <laughs> to re- reveal he's in, like like Perry the fucking platypus. <laughs> <laughs> a platypus? <laughs> a high school kid. A cowboy. A cowboy. <laughs> yeah. It's bizarre. So Issue four. Issue four. After that one. So Joan is now like a nineteen fifteen French bar opera singer performer. <laughs> and uh banger job it seems like yeah she meets a dude named dane who joan was like talking to after her performance she's like supposed to do that for like money or like help to get people to come back in but there was something about dane uh but she likes talking to to dane he's like a you know he's like a soldier dude he's humble like a nice military man and uh he will he eventually ends up occasionally coming back to this bar to remember like his fallen friends for more and one day dane comes back after another friend of his was killed the third time he meets her the third time he meets her and he's like i like i like joan a lot and he asks to marry her but joan has to like deny him uh then there's some talk about how he had to like lay next to his dead friend for like three days in war and pretend that he was dead so that he could leave with his life i think there's like a sniper like something like that yeah yeah. trapping him there which is pretty fucked up yeah but uh good fashion (laughs) yeah so i think she's being very like cautious cautious yeah thank you and she so she wants to say yes Mm -hmm. to the proposal on that third meeting yeah this one seems very real for her but she's not sure like how to handle this situation that she's in because she knows if she accepts Dane will probably die, which would be fucked up. And if she runs away, she'll die, I guess. Which is also fucked up. Yeah. But like, but she does deny him, but mm-hmm. she does still like him. So I don't know. When does the cowboy decide like, okay, now's the time? I, yeah. Is after, he in this I, bar? Is he watching her in the bar? I thought I understood clearly when I was reading it, but now like, but now looking I'm back, I'm like, it. I don't really know what the rules are here. <laughs> I don't know either. It's never explained. He comes back after a few more months when the bar's like closed and he's like, all my friends are dead. Uh, so they dance in the bar to no music which is nice and then joan professes her for real for real love for him and they do a kiss and then there's like a hard cut to just another love situation again so didn't end up working out but it seemed like she really wanted that one too so yeah, yeah, yeah. she said like when they're dancing like she didn't want him to go away because he might not come back you know and yeah. so she's like oh i'll marry you yeah and i know like a way out to where you can leave the war you know and so then they kiss and then it cuts to the new story so what that whole universe died that's guess, how he gets out of the war i guess or like i think i don't really know what happens to him <laughs> how does that stop him from his situation this might be like i like a, to think that she gets snapped. i might need to read volume two just because i'm like <laughs> what is happening yeah i know i kind of need to know. I need follow up on every story because we don't really know what like what's happening definitively in this trade it's not like a very good like ending point like for she a knows trade. she'll be transported somewhere else but she doesn't know that dane will i like to think if we don't see her get shot by the cowboy she just like gets snapped you know basically like she just turns to dust <laughs> yeah yeah my note here is just i'm confused <laughs> like sometimes she's in the middle of being in love and other times it feels like she lives a whole lifetime so i don't know <laughs> which makes this last issue even more confusing yes because 
Joan goes to see Penny Page, who's some kind of like dating psychologist person. Yeah. And she seems to know like Joan a little bit by name. And Joan is confused on how or why she's even there right now. Got an appointment. Uh, yeah, I guess, I guess she, she, she made the appointment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what I like about this one is that there are like mini flashbacks or like mini love story arcs that we see throughout the issue as like things are kind of getting explained yeah new ones yeah like new ones there's but a pirate one i was like give me a full issue of a pirate one right <laughs> yeah. am i crazy i want to see a pirate love a story pirate love yeah yeah she looks great in it too because she's got some sick pirate fashion going on but yeah joan tells penny about like what's been happening to her even like up to the cowboy and then penny just like rolls with it she's like okay and she's like asking her questions about it like why she turns some of these men down and then Penny reveals how this upsets Joan's mother, which is why she sent the cowboy to kill her. So Penny, Penny like knows about everything that's going on with, with Joan. Yeah. And she's like, it's your mother that's been doing it. <clears throat> and up to this point, the only thing we knew about who sent the cowboy is like, he just said like, she wouldn't want this to happen or something like that. So we thought it was just like some girl, but it turns out to be Joan's mom. So... Joan's mom doesn't want her to be in love or run away from love. Or is this just her way of like approving of whatever man she falls in love with? I don't know. I couldn't tell you. <laughs> yeah. I think so. the bad love is when I don't think she wants her to be in love at all. But then when she runs away from love, she's also getting killed. So I think it's just a bad mom. No, she. I think she wants her to get married. But like the right way? I guess. Maybe she's like a big Christian mom. She's like, you need to fall in love with a Christian boy. I don't know if like a time wizard would be a Christian, you know? Uh, good, good point. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I like the sequence where this is all kind of getting revealed because Joan drops her drink and then like over nine panels, we see like the drink spill start to like spread. Lazy. But it's, I think it's kind of <laughs> cool because it's like. No, nah, I mean like more, more liquid comes out somehow. But um, uh, I think just. If you drop the drink, it would it, come it out from the drink. out yeah. already. Uh, yeah. Well, I think it's just like it's not like it's being it's poured spreading. out slowly. Oh, uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah. You spread the carpet or whatever. Uh, but I think it's an interesting way to do that rather than just having like, I don't know, them talking to each other face to face. Yeah. Also, like an interesting thing that they're doing deliberately is that like the time period is kind of changing mid conversation. Like they're yeah. still in Penny's office, but sometimes it looks more like Renaissance era mm -hmm. and sometimes it looks like a weird 70s era yeah and like i don't really know why that's the case just to show that maybe they've had this conversation that, many times well maybe that but also that what's your name peggy or something penny penny also can, can jump through time i guess time travel <laughs> yeah and like is that aware of her situation she's not just some crazy lady in the 70s maybe penny's always there and after she falls in love but doesn't get killed, she has to she fucks up the relationship somehow and she has to go to like counseling and then Penny's the one that's always there. This is just a just a drama tell her business that she fucked up. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But Penny talks about how her mom paid good money for her to talk to Joan and how Joan always handles love wrong, I guess, which is why the cowboy comes. Because her mom, the cowboy, what? Ordered, he comes <laughs> and then murders Joan. <laughs> so Joan like threatens Penny with a knife or like a letter opener. So Penny's like, all right, let me call your mom real quick. And then they go to the top floor of whatever building they're currently in, which is a little bit weird. No, she, the mom's coming down to her office. Oh, okay. Well, she was at the but top she, floor. Yeah, she works in the top floor, yes. And then like the cowboy comes out and then fucking shoots Joan and it throws her back into another love loop. And that's the end of the, the fucking trade. So we get no answers. Yep. But it was pretty, it was a good time. <laughs> yeah. I think this is a good halfway point, you know, because like it, it wasn't just like another love story thing. And we were like, I still don't know what's going on. Yeah. It, it gives us like a little nugget of like closer to the, you know, if the this answers. Is a nugget, the whole meal better be like a 10 piece nugget <laughs> meal. <laughs> because need, like, need nine more nuggets. Because there's so many. There's extra nine, sauce. There's. There's nine nuggets of information that we need for this whole shit to make sense. But regardless, it's a pretty good time. Yeah. So I like it. So, but I, I think it does make this trade ending a little bit tough because it's like, 
I don't know what to do with this, you know, other than just like read the next one. But imagine yeah. we were reading this. He's like, because well, it, it's like a, you know, like a soap opera kind of thing. You know, it's very episodic and it's got to be like, every issue is like pretty different. Yeah. You know, and so part of his job is to keep you wanting to read. This is and true. And that's what he's doing here. I think give me two nuggets at the end. Two nugs? Two nugs. At least okay. show the mom, right? Am I crazy? Nah. <laughs> I don't want to see the mom. I'm, I'd be okay if we never see the mom. <laughs> <laughs> the mom's just fake. <laughs> like if if this ended at like issue 10, but we never see the mom, I think it'd be kind of cool. That would be ballsy. Because why do we just need to like see a design of like her mom, you know? Be like, hey, bitch, it was me. <laughs> it's just her with like gray hair, basically. Uh, what if it is Joan? What if Joan is mom? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> What if we just spoiled it? <laughs> accidentally. We're like trying to get people into fucking, this book. I need to read on. And to, then we just spoiled it. Yeah. I need to read on just to fucking figure it out. Because like, it's like her in the future because she has messed up her love life so many times. So she's like, so she's like sending herself. She's back. Sent a cowboy for herself. To be killed. But and she so, doesn't die somehow. But then like, what would be her goal? You know, to, to be pick like, the right husband, I guess. Well, I guess like if you're the future self and you watch like your past self and you watch them like go through life and fall in love with somebody, you automatically have the memories of how that marriage works out because you're the older person. Yeah. If you're in a specific time paradox or whatever. But like. So she's just waiting until the she first the time right you one. order yourself to be killed. I would be a little scared that that would have negative repercussions <laughs> she's for like, me. Oh. She's like, maybe we should try this. I don't know. Call me crazy. Maybe I should kill myself. But in the past. Yeah. Uh, no, that's probably not what it is, <laughs> but I like that idea. We got to theorize. Maybe, maybe he hasn't shown who Joan's mom is yet. Cause I think this is still, this is still ongoing. I'm pretty sure. Maybe we'll find out next Valentine's day. <laughs> next Valentine's day. Love everlasting two. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. We have a lot of romance com- comics actually. Yeah. I write them down as I find them. Like what? We got a pretty good list. I know we have like romance. Lore Olympus. Lore Olympus. We have Hellboy in Love. Ooh, that's a great pick. Yeah. Wow. And then there's this manga called How Do We Relationship? <laughs> and I think that'd be fun. That sounds fake. <laughs> no, no, dude. Manga names are absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> and that's like saying, How Do We Adult? Yeah, basically. I think like this is just like the Americanized like version yeah, of yeah, that yeah. title. Like yeah. that, you can't like say that you can't in Japanese, yeah. you know? I'm sure it means something that totally makes sense in japan but mm-hmm. anyway back matter matters daniel yeah back matter matters uh we get some creator bios there's a tom king one and he's like yeah i made the vision and the sheriff of babylon and strange adventures and the human target and superman up in the sky which we have yet to read uh um, oh the fucking the Walmart book? The Walmart book, yes. <laughs> I I would rather get to like five other Superman stories before up in the sky. Why? Why are you Be- so against it? Because there's just other ones it's that I'm Adam more interested Cu- in. A- Adam Kubert. Not my favorite artist. He's great. What are you talking about? He's a legend, yeah, but I there's others I would pick. Uh King served overseas in the Iraq and Afghanistan war. Oh, dude, Elsa and he was a CIA agent. I always think that's funny. <laughs> Elsa Charty did uh, November. Yeah. Nice. That's why I want to read it. We'll have to read that in November. <laughs> <laughs> I swear we'll do it this November. <laughs> so after after all of our Halloween or yeah, our horror books, then we'll do November. No, we'll do um we'll do V for Vendetta and then November. Yeah. Do I have anything? Oh here? yeah, that's right. Oh no, we have Venom Three as well. Assuming oh, fuck, I forgot it was a movie. I haven't <laughs> seen the second one yet. <laughs> really? It, uh, I don't want to. You'll like it. <laughs> uh, Elsa all, also has like a pretty good YouTube channel. I've seen a lot of the, her videos. Oh, uh, really? She draw? Uh, she doesn't draw, but she analyzes comics and why they're like good. Is she and, like, French? She's pretty French. She have a French accent? Yeah, she does. And nice. it's called Comics Case Study. I think she had like a really in-depth review of like Saga or... I think it sh- I think two of the ones I saw was like Saga and Matt Fraction's Hawkeye and like why those are so kind of groundbreaking for like comics as an industry. It's it's really it's a really good channel. So definitely recommend that out. And Matt Hollingsworth, apparently he is 
the one thing I learned about him is that he lives somewhere else. Hold on. For some reason, Croatia. This, is, this is exactly how I pictured Matt Hollingsworth. <laughs> I didn't know he lived in Croatia, though. That's kind of crazy. That's pretty neat. Where's uh, Clayton Callis from? New uh, York. Yep. Upstate New York. In a house. In a house. Dude, That's that, crazy. That letter of money, dude. Dude, I guess. I mean, he does like a million books. <laughs> That's true. That's the only way you can afford a house. Yeah. And then we got some banger covers, Daniel. I've seen some dude. of these on the stands. Clay Man, are you joking? Are you shitting me, dude? Uh, get him on an issue. Comics. I don't know. Tula Lote. We got Matthias Bergara, one of my favorites. Rafael Albuquerque. Terry and Rachel Dodson on one. Stepan Sejic. Sean Phillips did a cover. Wait, oh, what's, looks, what? The sick. YouTube is called Comics Case Study? I think so. Just look up Elsa, uh, her name. <laughs> She said she's launched a comics case study YouTube channel. So maybe it's not called that. Yeah, uh, it's just Elsa Charty channel. Yeah. Uh, she's got like interviews and stuff. These are like yeah. super case. well like produced. Yeah. The one that I like is case study colon Marvel's Hawkeye. That's like one of the, the cooler ones. But 15K yeah, subscribers, dude. Yeah, I know. What a legend. But she, she doesn't even need comics, dude. She doesn't. I mean, she could She could do this. So you get know? the fuck out of here. Nathan, what's your favorite cover? I really like the idea of Clay Mann doing like a, a, like a romance book because he's always drawn like Batman, like super badass and stuff. But I think like probably the Sean Phillips one. That's just because it's Sean Phillips. That could be a page from Criminal. You wouldn't okay, know. All right. Fuck you then. Let me, <laughs> let me look at these. That is a good one. No, I like I like the Clayman one. Leslie Hung is pretty good. It's a good name too. <laughs> uh, my favorite is uh, Jenny Frizen. Where's that one? Uh, top right. Oh yeah, top right. That, yeah, that's a good one. I just think it's cool. That's a good issue one cover if that's what it is. I think uh, the Elsa one is the issue one cover. The second one next is to it? the Clayman. Oh, okay. That's the one that I'm aware of. That's what I thought the trade cover was going to be. Yeah. But anyway, I love, I love, you know, I love some variants. We love some variants. We do love some variants, but that's it for back matter. Yeah. You know, a little, 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 fine. little nibble. This is a sub stack book. You know, it's not like we're going to, you know, could have had some pencils. Or, Actually, if it was a sub stack book, I feel like we'd have more because a lot of times they release an issue and they're like, yeah, this is like my dog in the book <laughs> that I drew. I just took a picture of my dog and now he's in the comics. So that's cool. You know, like it, it'll always be like shit like that. So uh, there, Ooh. there is something you remember. A couple months ago when Tyler Boss, you remember his, his like car got broken into or something or stolen? Yeah. And there was like pages in the back. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, I do. So there's like a picture that he posted online with like his hatchback open. And then someone put that picture of like and drew like his car like and put it in like a junkyard in a comic somewhere. <laughs> and I thought that was really funny. That's that's awesome. They're like, I need a reference of a hatchback. <laughs> <laughs> I think you just put it in there because it's a funny story. It is a crazy story. Like, I, I imagine the person that stole the car has no idea what oh, he has. Oh, isn't Duke. Tom Riley drew it. Oh, Tom Riley did? Wow. Yeah. I wonder if that's good. It's got to be, right? Like, see, in the middle there, you can see his car. Because there's like... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a like gasoline in the back or whatever. Yeah, I do remember somebody. seeing that when he posted it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is that one? Yeah. That's so funny. Because he still sold the shit, you know, the the pages and whatnot. They're just like smelly and dirty. Oh, that's how he found the pages. So did he did he find his car and there's just gasoline poured over the pages? Or? I, I guess I don't know. No. I don't. I I don't remember. I don't remember specifically. I, I remember his, his car got stolen. I'm like yeah. that's crazy. And I was like, dang, that sucks. We had him on the pod. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could help, <laughs> but I'm in Arizona. All right, Daniel. I stole it. What would you? <laughs> that would be crazy. <laughs> Uh, what would you rate this book? I'd give it like one of those C's candies, like heart-shaped boxes. I think that's a good rating because you get different chocolates and these are all different. Yeah, sometimes you get like stories. a nuts one, you'll get like a chewy one, you'll get like a truffle. Yeah. And uh, I, like, I love, ooh, love, I like that one. love variety because every issue is a little different. Yeah. And it's some high quality stuff here. It is some high quality stuff. And it'd be something I would try and give to Sarah, but she wouldn't like it, and I would eat it all. <laughs> so, kind of like what a comic would be. I think that's the best 
way to to uh write this book i i like fuck up valentine's day like every year because i get her like flowers and chocolates you know like the basic like mm-hmm. gift or whatever she's like i don't even like chocolate will you give me shit <laughs> i'm like what are you talking about and then i eat all of it <laughs> yeah. i'm like this is the good stuff sophie's pretty pretty easy when it comes to valentine's day stuff loves the flowers love the chocolates sarah wants like ingredients for to make like her own like italian soda I'm like, okay. That's very romantic. Like she you wants think like, about that? She wants like the syrups and stuff <laughs> that, that, that they can make, that they have at like Dutch Bros or whatever. Happy Valentine's Day. I got you some syrup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. She, she's is this just a random craving. Do you have your Valentine's Day planned yet? So I'll probably make her dinner. But like. That's romantic. Yeah. But I. Like I could like, get steaks and stuff, but we have steak like once a week kind of yeah, thing. Yeah. So it's like hardly romantic. Well, you got to do some, some crazy. Like, make, make a steak in the shape of a heart. <laughs> <laughs> make a smaller steak for her to eat. <laughs> yeah. Or just get a big steak and then cut it. Yeah. I think we're going to do sh- try and do sushi this year. Going to make sushi? No. Buy You're going to go to sushi place. Go buy it. I mean, someone makes it for us. Go and... to Safeway and get sushi. Oh, good idea. <laughs> or I can pretend like I I think made Sprouts it. has like $5 rolls on Wednesday. I love grocery store sushi. Yeah. I'll eat, I'll eat that shit all day. Yeah. It's awesome. So, yeah, I don't know. I feel like every day is a date, you know? So, it's hard to make. <laughs> such a cop out. <laughs> it's hard to make Valentine's yeah. Day special. <laughs> Are you doing shit like on Tuesday or whatever? Or whatever day it is? It's on Wednesday. So, it is on Wednesday? We'll probably have to change the pod dude, day. Dude, sprouts. <laughs> no, dude. No, <laughs> We're changing pod day. No exceptions. <laughs> Spend Valentine's Day with my bro. Can you believe that Nathan's being such a simp right now? <laughs> Who's in the wrong? Uh, pull up your phones now and vote. I'm going to post the episode one day late because of Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking, we can do it early if you want. I'm just kidding. We can do Thursday or whatever. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, let's get into the poll list, colon. Chip in your box. The poll list, the poll list. What did you shove in your box? Speaking of intimate time with your partner, let's... <laughs> Shove some things in our box, Daniel. Yeah. You, was there a f- world's finest annual? There was. I didn't know about it, but Jorge Fornes is on it. Cool. So, Fornes, a- annual Fornes. is like a thing that comes out like annually, right? Correct. But this book's been come. It's around like issue 25 or something. So 23 been, is so what been, just came out. So, it's been going out coming out for like two years i don't think they so, thought it was gonna be that long lasting i don't think anyone really does you know yeah you think <laughs> like even if it's like a banger like mark wade dan mora yeah like it's you're like, you like we'll know. maybe get six issues out of this yeah we'll do a fun batman superman and doom patrol story and see what happens you know yeah but it's great i i so i picked that up today i picked up three things today and then i left my comics in sophie's car and i can't remember for the life of me what the third thing i got was was it Avengers Twilight 2? Oh, yeah. Avengers Twilight 2. Thank what, you. Wait, what was the third thing you got? Alan Scott number four. Okay. Who gives a shit? I do. It's pretty good. So, is Avengers Twilight, didn't that last issue come out last week? I think is I it, realized this week that it's a weekly book, perhaps. How long is it? it it's got to be like five issues only, right? I guess. Is it the same guy? Who does art? Daniel Acuna. He did all Acuna. That, that's crazy. So, I, th- I like... Unless they've really That's planned so this lead time, ahead of dude. time. Yeah. Even just to do five issues in a row would be a lot of lead time. So I, I can only assume it's like six max. Yeah. Did you read the first one yet? No. Okay. That's fine. Um, are you going to get Moon Man number one? I didn't see it at the my shop. Book by Kid Cuddy? Kid Cuddy book. Are you going to if you go back? You should prioritize reading it. And then tell me if I should pick up Moon Man. I hope it's like the coolest shit ever. It looks and good. And then it's gone they've by the got, time you go back. They've got good talent on there. There's a letterer I follow called Hassan, named Hassan Oatsmain Elhow. He has a YouTube channel as well that I think is really good about analyzing comics. Hmm. And he like just recently became a letterer. Nice. And uh, Could we be letters? Huh? Could we be letters? Yeah. The letter team? A letter, so a lettering funny. team. <laughs> we get paid so little between the two Why of us. Why do they need like, two people? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what everybody asks. I think it's like... They're like, whose bank account does this go into, you know? Yeah. But yeah, like, I I feel like he's always just on, like, pretty good books so far. So, I'm... he And he's on Moon Man. Okay. And so, I'm like, maybe it's a good book. I don't know. Pretty neat. Cool. Did you read anything? I did, Daniel. What'd you read, Nathan? 
Batman Gargoyle of Gotham number two. Uh huh. I read. I read Justice League versus Godzilla versus Kong number four. Four. And like, I don't know what it is about the books that I decided to read this week, but both of those two had a line in there that I think was trying to be really cool, but it was so funny to me that it like made me laugh out loud. <laughs> okay. Like what? Uh, it's like not really a spoiler for the Gargoyle of Gotham one, but that one like made me laugh the hardest. There's a character that he like introduces and like part of his sh- shtick is like moths. Like there's a bunch of moths around, which makes it like really kind of freaky. Okay. And someone figures out that their dad is this moth person. And so when they figure that out, they're like dad. And he's like, no, call me mother. <laughs> And it reads like mother, but no, it's like because of the moth, be it's, gag, it's mother. And I'm like, that's so funny. <laughs> what a fucking line I that Raphael like, Grampa somehow. Raphael Grampa blessed me with this <laughs> bizarre line. <laughs> is the Godzilla one like a spoiler? It is. I'll take your word. But I'm for gonna it. say it. <laughs> All right. Someone just says release the Kraken, and there's like a Aquaman's Kraken comes out and helps fight some monsters. Oh, for sure. That's not really a spoiler. Yeah, not really. But that part's really fucking cool. I'm like, there's monsters fighting in the fucking ocean right now. Like Godzilla's swimming around there and shooting his beams in the ocean. And I'm like, this book's incredible. I'm sorry. It's actually way better than it like deserves than it needs to be. A lot of those wacky Justice League books tend to be that way. Yeah. So yeah, you got to get to it. Cool. I also read Alan Scott Green Lantern one through three. Oh, you hadn't read them yet? I hadn't. They were sitting there. I'm going to catch up on my Green Lantern books. I thought you said it. I thought you mentioned like. I read half of the first issue before I had to leave and go do something. And I was like, it's pretty good. But now it's I know it's like pretty interesting because they're they're doing like a little dance where they try and weave in that he's been like gay the whole time. Like this character who like recently was like officially becoming who like officially became gay i think in like 2021 no and he was gay in earth too but that's like technically a different one than what is now in continuity and so okay this book like jumps between like some different time periods like there's somebody that's killing his past like uh love interests pretty much and he was like people didn't even know i was gay until infinite frontier i think is when it happens and Hmm. Uh, so it's like interesting trying to see the writer Tim Sheridan weave in points in like actual continuity where he was like closeted and I think it's really cool for sure there's also a power that he has that he that I didn't know about and he could just like phase through walls when he's like lanterned up huh. or ringed up and I was like it's interesting but yeah it's a really good book great and that's all I read uh, I read Silent Night number one Oh, yeah. Yeah. Did you read that? No, I don't even know if I have it. It's okay. Okay. <laughs> like I was, it's like one of those things where I just bought number one. If I like it, I'll buy the rest. Mm-hmm. It's like, I don't know if I'll just like go catch up on it or whatever. Right. But we'll probably make like a good like Christmas book one of these years. Yeah. I think we have a couple things that would be, be pri- priority over it, but. Like what? The Deviant? Like The Deviant or like Friday by Ed Brubaker. Oh, yeah. We um, should do two, two Christmas books this year. Let's do four. Four? Christmas month. Christmas month. We'd run out so fast. Hold on. How many do I got here? I would only do a Christmas month if we can do the second or another. I have six Christmas books on here. Whoa. Tell me them. So there's Happy by Grant Morrison. Uh, yeah. Uh, there's Friday. Okay. There's Krampus. I guess there's a Krampus book. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, the Deviant, Silent Night. And there's a Lobo Christmas special I heard about. <laughs> I think it might be a one shot but Uh, it might be kind of cool to do like christmas specials a few of those are christmas books in the way that die hard is a christmas movie you know (sighs) like they just happen to be maybe in set in christmas time i think like happy uh, is not a christmas book right happy it's not about christmas the villain is like a christmas is like a mall santa and i think that's enough yeah yeah good point so i'm leaving it i'm wrong yeah we could do a full month we just burn through all the Christmas books. That's what I worry about. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, I don't think... Maybe if we the decide... The turn rate of us reading Christmas books versus how many Christmas books are coming out is not equivalent. We could know? do like two. We could do two. We could do two. Maybe. Depends on how... I just uh, love Christmas like, books though, December dude. is like just so 
packed with yeah. like shit coming out. Oh yeah, and typically I, there's a lot of movies. And I like and to shit. line shit up, you know. Yeah. So far, we just have the Sonic movie. <laughs> Are we reading a Sonic book? Yeah, do Sonic Sonic comics. So- Sonics. Sonic. Yeah. Sonics. Sonics. Uh, okay, fair enough. And there's like, there's like a run. Are we gonna read an ID Avatar th- book when the Avatar comes out? Uh, we'll we'll get it. We'll get into that because that comes out like. Okay, like May on. or something, right? Shut up, the on. show. We'd have to read it like as our next book. Really? Is that close? Yeah, the twenty second. Oh hell yeah, of February. Okay, cool. Well, we'll get into that. <laughs> we'll figure out which one we're gonna do. Anyway, um, I read, so I read else? that pretty good. I read a. I started a new manga called Jagon. Is that the one that you sent me? Yeah, the, where there's frogs fucking flying out of the sky. Yeah, and I was like, you know what's even better about those frogs? Like eat you. they go into your skin. Ew, dude, that's what I'm scared of. <laughs> and they like possess your body. Ew. Uh, I I I screenshotted a few things I wanted to show you to kind of describe this book. Jesus Christ. So all the for those who don't all know, the people in it are weird. So yeah, go ahead. For those who don't know, I have like a probably like a irrational fear, but like of frogs because they're weird and gross and you never know what they're thinking and they could jump on you and give you warts. <laughs> they give you warts? Yes, dude. I didn't know that. I had a friend. Some are poisonous. Remember Justin, my friend? In yeah. like elementary school? He used to like catch frogs and he'd come to school fucking warts all over his arms and Ey. shit. Yeah. Were they temporary? Gross. Yes. Okay. Not permanent. <laughs> no, no. I don't think he would like catching frogs if they were permanent, but I, I think it depends on the kind of frog. Also, like the cool ones or the poisonous ones. Are you kidding me? The colorful ones. Yeah, I'm like those the ones, ones you want to touch. The ones I'm like, those are kind of cool looking. I guess like yeah, because like toads are fucking weird to look at. Like if you're staring one like in the lumpy face and wrinkly. Yeah, and I've seen too many internet videos where they just jump at you, but like they don't they don't tell you. <laughs> you know, you know. So like, hey, like well, a dog. Heads up, I'm about to jump. <laughs> a dog. A dog will like show his teeth or like growl. You know, a uh-huh. frog could be chilling. Or it could be ready to jump into your mouth. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like so fucking fast too, which yeah. is uh, why I'm not a big fan. Anyway, back to J- uh, Jagan. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. Yeah. Um, but this is like one of those mangas where like everyone is just drawn kind of weird, like everyone's faces and stuff and just like their facial expressions. Like okay. look at these just like kids, you know, everyone's just drawn like a little funky. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. So it's a little unsettling. I think like... Yeah, they just choose. It's kind of like when SpongeBob would be like a little bit too like detailed. Yeah, it's That's like it's just feels. like creepy. Uh, so this is kind of like a horror esque comic. Like it's got like so once these like frogs like possess people, they call it, they're they become like fractured humans is what they call them, and they turn into like shit like this. Ew! What is that? Look, you can look closer if you want. So he's like killing people with his tongue. And like more oh. mouths come out because like it's like a trait of that guy. Ew. He's like um, he uses like his words to like hurt people. And so the frogs kind of like accentuate that. You know what I say to that? Sticks and stones, baby. <laughs> <laughs> That's gross. And so this dude, Jagan or whatever, he's got one of the frogs we don't find that out till later, but like he's got one and he's able to kind of control it to where it doesn't like possess him like that. And he's got this like arm that turns into like a blaster kind of thing. Like Mega Man? <laughs> like a bioorganic Mega Man kind of thing. Okay, sure. And it fucking pulverizes these dudes in like one hit. Oh, cool. And uh, So is he just like on the hunt for all the frog people? Yep. And his arm looks like that. Ooh, I don't like how that looks either. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a little it's like a little body horror because yeah. sometimes his arm gets out of control, goes on his face and shit. Ooh. And it, it uh, makes me real uncomfy. Dude, manga artists are a different breed. I love manga. It's so I'm glad I found this one because it's like you really have to like kind of dig for what you're looking for. Yeah. You know, there's only so many there's like a lot of shit, but it's like once you kind of have like a I guess a taste for it, it's kind of hard to find things that are close to things that you like this mm-hmm. one's like pretty similar to like chainsaw man i think okay uh, as far as like just story arc and then like the art and whatnot monster design stuff like that yeah yeah which is like most of the fun that's like the coolest part yeah for sure so yeah that one's pretty good i'm on like chapter 11 nice and it's only like 140 chapters so only only <laughs> did you watch anything new nathan um uh, mainly game of thrones because 
You finished Sophie's, the first season, right? And, yeah, I finished the first season. Sophia's like bullying you into like dude, knowing everything. Dude, sometimes, yeah, she's quizzing me. Someone will, will show up and be like, what's his fucking name? How many fucking fingers does he have or whatever? <laughs> like, <laughs> when's his birthday? What family does he come from? Yeah, like what family does he come from? Who's his, who's all of his siblings? What's their family crest? <laughs> yeah, it's like shit like that. I'm like, uh, I the, think that's after Rob. After the first season, <laughs> you definitely aren't catching on to that kind of shit, you know? But yeah. It, it's it's hard uh but i i just encourage you to stick with it and be I'm patient st- and I, th- I i think it's something that you could love i potentially because i mean like the dink is like the best character oh he's the best and he's like so he's like pretty smart uh and he's like just i like when he just disses people but like kind of yeah. subtly i think that's fun but i feel like they try really hard to make you dislike certain people and it's like they they try like a little bit too hard. Like who? Like Daenerys's brother, who is like yeah, he's a creep. He is like a creep, but like every time you see him, he's doing something that's just like way too much. Yeah, like not even like I don't know. I I feel like I know I'm not supposed to like him, and you can he can be more unlikable without trying so hard. Like that's the only way I can describe it. I think it's just kind of like. I think shows that are like super popular tend to have like a lot of characters that you just don't like, you know, yeah, like no, no one is like perfect in the show, fine. you know, but also there's ones that like are just clearly like the worst and it makes it just that more satisfying when they die, you know? Yeah. Like I feel like, like Joffrey, like uh, I guess spoilers <laughs> if, if you haven't seen like the biggest show of all time, but <laughs> like, I feel like, He's kind of like that as well. Not as bad uh, sometimes, but like I wouldn't I would understand when he like kills Ned be like, okay, he's definitely someone I don't like. Yeah. But up until that point, he's trying like way too hard to just like have control of everything, which makes sense for his character. I know, but I don't know. Something something about him is just like the writers are like really trying to hammer home that we just don't like him. That dude like quit acting after he played Joffrey because people hate him so much. Yeah. Whoa, he just like, goes to like college now. It's like Skylar from Basically. Breaking Bad. Yeah. Like that's a character that people don't like, but I feel like is done well. From her point of view, she has some logic, you know? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, that's totally reasonable. But you're just on Walt's side, you know? So you yeah, kind of. Because you've been watching the whole time. Her. But like, I, she's also not great. I don't think so. Yeah. I mean, she like cheats and stuff and like, that's not good, but also just her husband has on your a birthday? secret meth empire. Yeah. You know, too. Not to like, yeah, that too. choose the lesser evil of the two, but like, <laughs> so I, I think there's, that's the only thing that like has just been in my mind, but yeah, I'll probably end up loving it like everybody else. Yeah. Just like, cause there's some cool moments uh, in there. I didn't expect to see the mountains dick that one time. I was like, look at that. <laughs> the mountains dick. Or no, sorry, Hodor, Hodor's dick. Hodor's, yeah. yeah. But pretty good. Yeah, good What have you been watching? Mm, nothing. Nothing? I've just been... Watching anything else? I've just be reading while, like, Sarah, like, refuses to watch, like, anything other than her show right now. Mm-hmm. It's not... She doesn't even like it that much. She just refuses to... <laughs> I'm like, you want to watch a movie? She's like, what movie? I'm like, I don't, I <laughs> Damn, don't know. We got, right. we got to look. <laughs> I don't have a movie primed and ready. Yeah, I know. I got, so, I got to... Got to be ready with something to, to pitch to her or whatever. I, I think we're going to start a show that's like not an hour long so that if we don't have an hour to watch a show, we can still watch a show. And I think it's probably going to be Death Note. Oh, uh, for sure. So. Based I, on how much time you have before bed or whatever. Yeah, pretty much. Anyway, what are we going to read next week, Nathan? What are we going to read next week? Uh, I guess an Avatar book. Sure. So when does the show come out? Uh, February 22nd, I believe. Wow. Okay. Let me double check. So there's <sighs> some stuff that people have said is good, and I don't remember off the top of my head because I thought we were going to have more time. Well, that's but... very helpful, Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, February 22nd. Did you know that like a lot of these like Avatar comics were written by like Gene Luen Yang? Really? Yeah, I think like should... all of them are. Oh, sweet. We should do one of those. Yeah, I think I Googled like the most popular ones because they kind of just fill the gaps. Right. Of like, you know, the show. Let's see what comicbook.com. Do they rank them or something? Yeah. Okay. Uh, There's one called The Search. 
you got to look at the descriptions because it might be a little like what more happened to Zuko's ha- mom, Ursa. So if you want, uh, they got to it in this. So probably not that one. Oh, there's this one that takes place right after the series finale. And that one's written by Jean Luen Yang. That sounds cool. What's that called? It's called Avatar: Colon the Last Airbender Dash the Promise. It's by Jean Luen Yang and Guri Hiru. Fans finally got to see how the characters dealt with the aftermath of the Hundred Year War. So there's three parts to the promise. I will just do the first part. Yeah. The first part is 80 pages. Should we do two? Nah. Nah. <laughs> I guess if there's one with like Toph. Toph. Or Toph. Sorry. Toph. I don't know. I haven't seen the show <laughs> in a while. No, I like this one. This, isn't, this seems good. Yeah. It seems like a good point. Cause most, dude, most... this shit's got five stars. Five? On fucking Kindle. Whoa. Like the omnibus and then all three parts are That's five stars. Sick. That's crazy. This better be a banger then. Also, I, I gotta rewatch like the last episode like, as a refresher. Dude, it's so cool. Well, like the last episode was like three or four parts, I think. So maybe we should just watch those. Yeah. Do you remember when Oppa was lost? It's been a long time, dude. You don't remember that? I, I, I haven't done it like... It was so sad. I didn't do like the... You know, the pandemic rewatch. I did. You, know, you did? <laughs> well, I didn't get through all of it, I don't think. I just remember like specific episodes, like that owl one in the library. I don't remember that one. Really? That's the best I remember the episode. owl one, but not when Oppo was lost for like four or five episodes. Because it was scary. <laughs> it was kind of scary. There's one where like Toph is like definitely blind because she's in the desert where there's like sand and she can't like really feel the ground that much. And I'm like, damn, that sucks. Okay, so Avatar: The Promise. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sounds good. I'm trying to remember. Wait, how long is this omnibus? Probably like two hundred something. Probably be one two forty. So the omnibus is like the three parts. Nah, part one. Cool, sounds good. Anything else? I'm excited for that show. Sophie's never seen it. Avatar. Avatar. Yeah, and she's all like trying to force you to watch. She doesn't think this is anime. It's not, but it's still fucking good. It's like pretty much, you know, pretty close. I think it's a Japanese studio that makes it. I don't know. I, I don't think know I thought it was American. I mean, it's Nickelodeon. Maybe it's, American. Maybe it's like, American writers or something. I don't know. But that's what we're going to read next week. All righty. Thanks, everyone, for listening, for watching. Go check out the link tree. Go like, comment, subscribe, stuff like that. Five stars. We tell, appreciate it. Tell us what comics you're getting for your significant other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if any. <laughs> tell us how. Tell me how to riz my wife. <laughs> On this Valentine's Day. Uh, I need help risen up my wife. It's because I have a four Valentine's Day, right? Yeah. yeah. So we might we might get some help. We need some Riz help. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> From the people that listen to comic book podcasts. Yeah. Please. <laughs> they, those people got the Riz for those sure. Are, those are the Rizziest. <laughs> <laughs> Cherryspot at gmail.com. And goodbye. Happy Bye. Valentine's Day. Man, we love you. Mm, I don't. I only love one person. And it's me. God. <laughs> <laughs>